Hello everybody, my name is Gila and welcome to my Testimony of Freedom. Today is part four of the series and it has been super amazing putting this together for you. So I hope you've been enjoying it as well. Um, if you have been, let me know, okay? <laughs> so for today, we're going to be talking about declaration, speaking things into existence. If you haven't figured it out yet, the song has three parts to it. It is made up of the testimony part at the beginning of the song. It is made up of declarations. Then it also has a Thanksgiving aspect to it. And today I want us to talk about declaration. Why is that so important? In the song, my declaration was, I am free. I have the victory. I've been rescued by the Lord and so much more. So let's dive in deeper into it now, shall we? I'm going to start off today with a little bit of a story to share. It's about a man. He was a very, very hardworking man. And every single morning, he woke up to go to work. He had a big family, a lot of children. And yet, it seemed as though he was poor. And yet, he went to work every single morning. From the crack of dawn, until the sun goes down, he was working. And every single time his children would ask him for something, he would always contemplate on giving it to them. And so his children did not understand him at all. They just thought he's very stingy with his money. He doesn't want to give us something. He doesn't want to spoil us. He lived beneath his means for a reason and this only made sense when he passed on when he passed on the family gathered all of his children together for the reading of the will all of his children except one this is one of his sons that had left home a long time ago he was now living at the street under a bridge and he was suffering he sometimes didn't have food to eat, he didn't have shelter clearly, and he didn't have all the basic necessities that he needed. But all of that was way better than him being in the house of his father. Now when his father passed on, nobody could reach him because nobody knew where he was. And so they buried his father and it was said and done. Now when the will was read, because he was absent, Everything was distributed to each child as the father had wished. 20 years go by and this man is older now. He decides, you know what? I think it's time to go back home now. But he doesn't action it out. And eventually his siblings get a hold of him. They find him and bring him back home. To his surprise, his father had left him a home and a lot of money money that his children had never seen nor experienced why because while he was on earth he worked so hard didn't spoil himself didn't do anything for himself because he wanted his children to have the best life they could possibly have and now when this son comes back home he realizes that he could have lived a life of royalty, but he didn't. He stayed in a bridge, he starved. He did not have enough to make it by each day. And yet, he was an heir. He had received something from his late father, despite their arguments. And this started reminding me about God. It reminded me about how Jesus came on earth just for us. And before you start thinking I'm just talking about random stories, I'm going to give you something from the Bible that links to the little story that I just gave you. We're going to read from the book of Colossians chapter 4 verse 1 to 7. Bear with me, okay? It reads as follows. Think of it this way. If a father dies and lives an inheritance for his young children, those children are not much better off than slaves until they grow up. 
even though they actually own everything their father had. They have to obey their guardians until they reach whatever age their father has set. And that's the way it was with us before Christ came. We were like children. We were slaves to the basic spiritual principles of this world. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba Father. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. How amazing is that? So we know that there's an inheritance, like we said in part three. And now we find out that, well, we've always known, but we're children of God and we're heirs to this inheritance. When we go back to the story I told you, the son that was living on the street, he had so much available for him. He just never accessed it. But beyond that, he didn't even know it existed. He didn't know he had ownership of something so amazing. He still enjoyed it, but he could have enjoyed it for longer. Had he gone back home on time. The will was read in his absence. And you know how when someone passes on and a will is read, sometimes there are conditions. Although you own something, there are conditions to as to when you can get it, how you can get it, how you can use it in some cases. And this just reminded me of the promises of God. Because guess what? God has a will too. And as we benefit from our inheritance, God's will is his word. The word of God is the will of God. And it is flooded with promises for all his children to enjoy. When I realized this, it got me so excited because I just wanted to have ownership of every single thing that God said I deserve. If God says peace is mine, I'm going to go back and claim that peace. But you know what's amazing about the word of God? It doesn't just tell you about every single thing that you're entitled to. It tells you how to access it. It gives you the terms, the conditions. The word of God in the book of Job, and I'm going to read it. It's in chapter 22. Verse 28, it says, You will decide on a thing and decree it, and it shall be established for you. And the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. God gave us authority to speak things to existence. God gave us authority to speak things to existence. God gave us authority to speak things to existence. We were created by God in his image and he spoke a word and things became. The whole world was created. He created the birds in the sky, the sea, the fish in the sea, every animal that creeps on the ground just by speaking. And you know what? When he created us, he gave us dominion. He gave us authority. We are kings, a royal priesthood. Do you know what kings do? They make a decree and everybody else has to obey. It's the same as you. 
you declare something over your life, over your country, over your family, with the greatest faith, and it is established for you. And you know what? When it feels like it's not happening, you can go back and say, you know what? I am the righteousness of God. I was created by God. The power of life and death was placed in my tongue. And when I declare a thing, it shall be established for me. Reinforce yourself. Reintroduce yourself. Even in the darkest of places. Speak joy in the face of misery. Speak peace in the face of frustration. Declare the opposite of what you're going through. And you know what I've found for myself? It's that declarations create an expectation. Because you know who you are and the power that your tongue carries, when you declare something, you expect it to happen. And God has blown my mind by reminding me of the power that I have. I once declared, I am free. I didn't feel free. I didn't feel anywhere near being free. I felt bound, but I still declared it anyway. Refuse to declare anything that is contrary to the word of God and what he has said over your life. That's my encouragement. It worked for me. And I can only pray and hope that it works for you. You can start where I started, declaring the promises in the book of Deuteronomy 28. And I hope that it's helpful to you too. And that as time goes on, that you can write down all the promises that God has over your life as you read through his will, his word, and declare that over your life. For today, that's it for me. My name is Kile, and this is my testimony of freedom.